In general, this is what learning looks like in a modern academic setting. You're sitting in front of a dry, poorly written textbook, reading about some fascinating topics, but they're written in the most mundane, boring way, and you're just forced to sit and read through this. At the end, you might have a few practice questions, time to review some notes, and on to the exam. Throughout this process, you might have some exciting highlighting going on, some annotating on the side, but for the most part, you're just grinding through reading this material very kind of in a passive way, trying to absorb all you can to get ready for that test. Never has this been more apparent than in medical education where every two to three weeks you have an exam, you get this grind session where you're reading this really boring textbook, do a couple of practice questions and then good luck, and then rinse and repeat every couple of weeks for the exam. I remember doing this myself, getting through a chapter of a textbook and by the end of it, I don't even know what I read on the first couple pages. Only a small percentage would actually be solidified until I had to do multiple passes, multiple passes to try to get it into my head. And that kind of led me to think about what are the most efficient ways? What is the way that we can optimize how much we're learning in our first pass? How do we minimize the amount of passes we need to do? How do we use our time most effectively? The breaking point for me was when I had to study for step one and our dedicated period was only about four to five weeks and I was nowhere near ready to take it in the beginning of that dedicated period. So I had to find a way to utilize my time effectively. And that is what we're gonna be talking about in this video here is what I call the spider web theory of learning by the MedBros trademark. And I have not seen anybody else talk about this strategy. So what am I talking about with this? The entire premise of spiderweb theory has to do with the fact that you learn better when you're applying the information, asking the questions yourself, and basically using your mind instead of having stuff passively fed to you. For example, if you're playing basketball, I don't know why I love the basketball analogy so much, but if you're playing basketball, do you think you're gonna get better if you're just watching tapes again and again, over and over? Or are you gonna get better when you get out there, get your hands on the ball, put some shots up? You're obviously gonna get better when you're out there doing it. That is the whole premise behind this learning technique, but there's a little more to it. So nothing too revolutionary here yet, I hope. I think we've all heard of active reading being better than passive reading. I think we've all heard of questions being super important to solidify the knowledge, apply the knowledge, and have stuff stick in your head. But where the meat of this technique comes in is when do you jump into those questions? And I'm gonna propose way earlier than you think you should be jumping into those questions and how we should be doing those questions and tackling those materials. That is what spiderweb theory is all about. Let's get right into it with an example because I think that's the best way to look at what I'm talking about with this thing because it's, it's kind of hard to explain. All right, so let's jump right into this question. This is gonna be a medicine question, but like I said, this technique can be applied to whatever field you're into. All right, so let's look at this question. A 26 year old man presents to his primary care physician for a routine checkup. He reports, so whatever the case may be, whatever, you knew the question, you didn't, you guessed it right, who cares? You guessed, you got it wrong, who cares? Basically, you gave your logic, you tried to understand the question, you had some kind of logic, hopefully, or maybe you didn't even have any logic and you gave an answer and now you're given the, the correct answer and hopefully if you're doing a correct question bank, which you should be doing with this technique, you have explanations for the wrong answers. So you went to lecture, you kind of got a gist of what's going on. Maybe you skimmed through the chapter, you got a gist of what's going on. You get to the question, you try to understand what the question is asking you, you apply your knowledge and your reasoning to it. And then you have your own questions developed as you're doing the question as well. Why are they asking me that? Why are they giving me that information? What is the significance of putting that in the question? So you're already devising your own questions and you're seeking to answer that yourself by going through the answer choices. So once we have the correct answer here, we can read the whatever logic they're gonna give me for this correct answer. And the key to this is Hopefully you're doing this on a good question bank because that's kind of the key of the, the strategy because a good question bank is gonna have you go through the incorrect explanation. So as you can see here, uh, it tells us why it's not amiodarone, fleconide, and you know you can go through and read all the, the incorrect answer choices. And that's where the key is. You don't wanna just passively absorb the incorrect answers. You wanna ask, why was it not that answer? Why was that incorrect answer wrong? Why couldn't it be applied to this situation? If you don't understand the explanation here and the incorrect explanation, or you want more explanation, you go and dig deeper into those incorrect answers. For example, if I didn't even know what amiodarone was or what it does or how it works or when I should have used it and why it doesn't apply to this, I would go back to the chapter in the book, go back to that part of the lecture and research. 
why did amiodarone not apply to this question? And when you do that, you're learning about amiodarone, you're connecting it to this question, why it didn't apply, it's gonna to stick to you better. You're actively asking the question yourself, why does amiodarone not work in this situation? By asking that more active question, you're gonna go and you're gonna have that knowledge stuck in your head a lot better than if you just passively read amiodarone is used for this in some textbook. You're actually gonna dissect every single answer choice here. By the end of this question, you should know why verapamil was used in this situation and why each of these answer choices were not used in this situation and what situation they should be used in. So that's a lot of information you're getting from one question. That's like a giant section of a chapter on antiarrhythmics. Imagine if you do this for every question in this question make, just a random question make I just pulled up has like 600 questions. If you had done that for this entire question bank, gone through each of the incorrects, and you will now be a master of all of this knowledge and you've applied it in an active way. So it's a little hard to explain this as you can see, but I hope you get the gist of it. The key is is you really want to get some kind of base knowledge. You want to get your professor's lecture for the day. You want to get through maybe skimming a chapter for the day. You don't want to be stuck on the boring passive stuff and you really want to jump as fast as you possibly can to the questions and from the questions you're actually going to loop back to those boring texts and those boring lectures so it's more solidified. It's more active reading. By doing this strategy, you're gonna see your study sessions are gonna get longer, six, seven hours, and this is exactly how. For example, when medical students are on surgery rotation, it is painstakingly brutal to watch a parathyroidectomy where you're just standing there for six to seven hours unless you are the surgeon doing it. If you are the surgeon doing the surgery, those hours go a lot faster, and that's because you're active, your mind is working, you're thinking, you're using your hands. That's what you're gonna be doing with this strategy. Maybe not using your hands as much, I don't know, flipping through them book pages, but it overall is a more active process. And you can definitely apply this to so many other fields. All you really need for this is a very solid question bank, one that gives you explanations for incorrect answers, one that is very comprehensive and goes over things. For medicine, that would be something like UWorld. Then you need a text that you can refer to or a set of lectures that you can refer to. Say you're doing pathoma as a medical student or you're doing first aid and you have this text to refer back to. If you're a business student or a law student, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but maybe you guys have some kind of question bank and then some kind of authoritative text that you can refer back to. So for exactly when you jump into those questions, I think it's entirely possible for somebody to pass the USMLE step one medical board exam if you just get through UWorld and you do my technique. As long as you have a basic understanding of the sciences, you jump into those questions, you really review all the wrong answers and you just cram that knowledge into your head in this active learning way, I definitely think anybody could pass that step one exam, really, coming out of high school or even college. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. It's a little bit of a convoluted topic to explain on how to exactly do it but I've been carrying this strategy out even now for step two step three doing the same thing it's working wonders for me in terms of just getting that knowledge in there and you're not sitting there just being bored reading through these textbooks I find it to be a super awesome technique I really wanted to get this out there because I haven't seen anybody put this together so hopefully you guys enjoy the med bros spiderweb technique or maybe you've already been doing it and you can just let me know that <laughs> I'm way behind. But if you haven't heard of this, I really hope this helps you guys out. Be sure to leave it in the comments if you guys tried this technique, if you even understand what I've been saying. Just to summarize again, it's basically getting from the material, the boring past part, get as fast as you can to the active part and don't forget to loop back when you get the incorrects. Don't just look at it as, okay, I got the correct answer and there's the incorrects. Dissect each incorrect. Jump back to the main primary text for each of those incorrect answers and really get that knowledge into your mind. And when you go back, you should be able to explain every single aspect of that question. And when you move on and do this again and again for every single question, you'll have this giant wealth of knowledge. I hope you guys give it a go. Make sure you leave in the comments if you tried it, if it works for you. I really, really wanna know. Maybe you're in something that isn't medicine. I definitely want to hear if this also applies to you as well. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Get out there and use the spiderweb technique and I will see you guys in the next one.